the many days of Norman McCaig. Ineducable me. I don't learn much. I'm a man of no improvements. My nose still snuffs the air in an amateurish way. My profoundest ideas were once toys on the floor. I love them. I've licked most of the paint off. A whiskey glass is a rattle I don't shake. When I love a person, a place, an object, I don't see what there is to argue about. I learned words, I learned words, but half of them died for lack of exercise. And the ones I use often look at me with a look that whispers, liar. How I admire the eider duck that dives with a neat loop and no splash in the gannet that suddenly harpoons the sea. I'm a guillemot that still dives in the first way it thought of, poke your head under and fly down. Climbing Sullivan I nod and nod to my own shadow and thrust a mountain down and down. Between my feet a loch shines in the brown, its silver paper crinkled and edged with rust. My lungs say no, but down and down this treadmill hill must go. Parishes dwindle, but my parish is the stone that tough the stone, and the cramped quarters of my flesh and bone. I claw that tall horizon down to this, and suddenly my shadow jumps huge miles away from me. <clears throat> Sleeping compartment. I don't like this, being carried sideways through the night. I feel wrong and helpless like a timber broadside in a fast stream. Such a way of moving may suit that odd snake, the sidewinder, in Arizona, but not me in Perthshire. I feel at right angles to everything, a cross grain in existence. It scrapes the top of my head and my foot soles. To forget outside is no help either. Then I become a blockage in the long gut of the train. I try to think I am an Alice in Wonderland mountaineer bivouacked on a ledge five feet high. It's no good. I go sidelong. I rock sideways. I draw on my feet to let Avi more pass. Lord of Creation at my age, I find myself making a mountainous landscape of the bedclothes and movement of knee and foot, and there's Culmore and a hollow filled with Loch Shonis gig. I watch tiny sheep stringing along a lower slope, playing at God. One day, when I go back to Ascent, this could frighten me, this could make me have to drive from my mind. A leg stretching out underground to the collapse of Culmore, the shedding in every torrential direction of Loch Shonisgig. But now I cock up my left foot and create Sullivan. I watch myself fishing from a rocky point. I think at my age and stretch out my image vanishes. God has destroyed himself again. Private. Those who recognise my mask and recognise my words all to be found in the dictionary. Shall I scare them, bore them with a truth? Shall I distort the words to be found in the dictionary in order to say what they mean when they mean me? How my friends would turn away from the ugly sounds coming from my mouth. How they would grieve for that comfortable McCaig whose small predictions were predictable. How they would wish back the clean white bandages that hid these ugly wounds. Go away, Ariel, heartless musical Ariel. Does everyone prefer Caliban to you as I do? Supersonic Ariel. Go zip round the world, or curl up in a cow's lip spell. I'd rather be visited by Caliban. As I am, I am, I chat with him, helplessly slipping out of an armchair, scaly on the carpet. I'm teaching him to smoke. It soothes him when he blubbers around Miranda and goes on about his mother. Phone a bat, Ariel. Leave us to have a good cry. To stare at each other with recognition and loathing. Patriot. My only country is six feet high and whether I love it or not, I'll die for its independence. Small lochs. He's obsessed with clocks, she with politics, he with motor cars, she with amber and jet. There's something to be obsessed with for all of us. Mine is lochs. The smaller the better.
I look at the big ones, Loch Ness, Loch Lomond, Loch Shin, Loch Tay, and I bow respectfully. But they're too grand to be invited home. How could I treat them the way they'd expect? But the dog loch runs and eats when I go walking. The cat loch purrs on the windowsill. I wade along Princess Street through Loch na Barrack. In smoky bars, I tell them like beads. I don't think it's just the big ones that are lordly named. I met one once, and when I asked what she was called, the little thing said, without blushing, mind you, the loch of the quarry of the green waterfalls. I know they're just H2O in a hollow, yet not much time passes without me thinking of them, dandling lilies and talking sleepily, and standing huge mountains on their watery heads. London to Edinburgh. I'm waiting for the moment when the train crosses the border. The home creeps closer at 70 miles an hour. I dismiss the last four days and their friendly strangers into the past that grows bigger every minute. The train sounds urgent as I am. It says home and home and home. I light a cigarette and sit smiling in the corner. Scotland, I rush towards you into my future that every minute goes smaller and smaller. <clears throat> Portobello Waterfront. It's acquired a French look, parasols and bikinis and beach balls and surfboarding and bullying speedboats. When I was a boy, it was proletarian scotch, cloth caps, donkeys, fun city, the Salvation Army, beery faces snoring under the daily record. I'd like to make a gesture. Dare I paddle with my trousers rolled up to my knee and my shoes hanging around my neck? I watch a bird watcher. He steals a gull from the air and imprisons it in his binoculars as I do with the year 1920. And I see my father, six feet two of him, St Vitus dancing along the cakewalk and into my mouth steals the taste of sand and ice cream and salty fingers. Journeys. Travelling's fine. The stars tell me that. And waves and wind and trees in the wind tugging to go farther then their feet will let them, poor feet clogged with the world. Travelling's fine when she's at the end of it, or mountains breathing their vivid Esperanto, or ideas flashing from their always receding headlands. There are other bad journeys to a better place I can't get to, yet. I lean towards it, tugging to get there, and thank God, I'm clogged with the world, it grips me. I hold it. On a beach. There's something I want to forget, though I forget what it is. My mind niggles and grits, like the sand under my feet. I used to know things I didn't know, not any more. Now I don't know even the things I know, though I think I do. Little waves slide up the beach and slide back, lisping all the way. The moon is their memory. In my head there is no moon. What I don't know, I don't even think I know. That was Socrates, conceited man. I'm trying to remember what I've remembered to forget. Twenty yards away, a seal's head looks at me steadfastly, then tucks itself under the surface, leaving no ripple. Bright day, dark centre. The dust silvers and a wind from the corner brings a dream of clarinets into the thick orchestra. There's a place sending messages across the river of people, and the sullen wharves of buildings begin to smell of bales and distances. I have a sad place that nobody enters, but a ragged man hooking the air with skinny fingers. I sit beside him sometimes, feeling his despair, his loneliness infects me. But today's a day of clarinets and silver under the lucky horseshoe of the sky. I leave him and go into the whirlpools of light. Through a jazz of gardens and heliograph windows. That house is my monkish cell, my fortress. I put the key in the door and stop, terrified that the ragged man is sitting in my chair with his skinny fingers tangled in his lap. On the pier at Kinloch Burvey. The stars go out one by one, as though a blue tit the size of the world were pecking them like peanuts out of the sky's string bag. A ludicrous image, I know. Take away the grey light. I want the bronze shields of summer. 
or winter's scalding sleet. My mind is struggling with itself. That fishing boat is a secret approaching me. It's a secret coming out of another one. I want to know the first one of all. Everything's in the distance, as I am. I wish I could flip that distance like a cigarette into the water. I want an extreme of nearness. I want boundaries on my mind. I want to feel the world like a straitjacket. Emblems, after her illness. They went away, the sad times. It wasn't I who turned them out of doors, but another. The Swifts have returned. They've dropped their burden of long journeys. With what joy they scream over the rooftops. Pour the coffee, sit by the fire that says home. Tomorrow, we'll welcome all the tomorrows there are to be. Do you hear the Swifts? They tie together the bright light. They nest in secret places. Sargasso Sea, tangled in weeds, far from home, on an ocean I've nothing to do with. How I envy the elvers who leave their sargasso and drift across the Atlantic. So many will find the river I know best. How eagerly they swim against its rushing torrent that brings them news from high places I once visited long ago. By the free lochens, I sit trying to look like a heather bush hoping to see a mewing buzzard or a vole or a dragonfly, how quickly the days slide away into where they came from. It's hard to change anything. I look into my hand to see if there's an idea there, giving birth to a strenuous baby, only a lifeline that's not long enough. An obstinate old rowan tree stands on a tiny island. So many storms, yet there it is with only a few berries, each determined to be the last one to drop into the water. And the light floods down, revealing mountains and flowers and so many shadows. If only a merlin would hurtle past, that atom of speed, that molecule of life. Hugh McDermott. When he speaks a small sentence, he is a man who presses a plunger that will blow the face off a cliff. Or, one last small pen stroke and the huge poem rides down the slipway, ready for enormous voyages. He does more than he does. When he goes hunting, he aims at a bird and brings a landscape down. Or he dynamites a ramshackle idea. When the dust settles, what structures shine in the sun? After his death, for Hugh McDermott. It turns out that the bombs he had thrown raised buildings that the acid he had sprayed had painfully opened the eyes of the blind. Fisherman hauled prize-winning fish from the water he had polluted. We sat with astonishment enjoying the shade of the vicious words he had planted. The government decreed that on the anniversary of his birth, the people should have observed two minutes pandemonium. Granddaughter visiting she balances things, a brick upon a brick, a ring in one hand, a spoon in the other, and the two nine months she's lived. Her home is warmed by the steady glow of electric fires, but here she holds a brick over another brick to stare at the flames jumping into, in the grate. With what concentration she stares at them, soon she'll unbalance. That first nine months with nine years, with nineteen years, her left hand won't know what her right hand is doing, and who can guess what fires she will stare at, sitting in a scatter of forgotten toys. To be a leaf. My free rolled after being a seal and a daffodil and a frog, demanded Glampa. Be a leaf. To hang nicely on a twig tip or snug in a bosomly branch, a rockaby to entertain a star or two, a caterpillar loops in my mind, a goat snatches, the wintry earth draws my blood from me, and the tree of my veins is an aspen trembling, I hold her, pulling out the softest of thorns between mountain and sea, honey and salt, land smell and sea smell, as in the long ago, as in forever. 
the days pick me up and carry me off, half child, half prisoner. On their journey, that I'll share for a while. They wound and they bless me with strange gifts, the salt of absence, the honey of memory.